Hello! I wanted to do a quick video tonight based off of a couple of comments that I had received uh, to really just go through a couple of tips and tricks that I found when using SharpCap for live stacking. So the first one is that you don't actually have to use SharpCap just on uh, an actual live session with a camera. Uh, that's going on. You can actually use that live stacking feature after the fact on images that you've already taken. Or in one way that I like to use it is in conjunction with Sequence Generator Pro. So for example, right now I'm doing images on the Whirlpool Galaxy. I'm doing Hydrogen Alpha here. And you know that's great, I can see my preview here, but wouldn't it be nice if I could also, while I'm running you know, my sequence that's going to go through and do a bunch of different images and then move on to you know, other filters and do other images, wouldn't it be great if I could also see how this stack is going? And I can do that by letting Sequence Generator Pro do what it does best here uh, on the capture side, but then also opening up SharpCap to do the stacking. So in order to do that, what you do is you would go to cameras, just like you were going to add another camera, but instead of adding my actual imaging camera, I'm going to go down to the bottom and choose Folder Monitor Camera as my option. And when you do that, what will happen is over on the right hand column, your camera controls will actually have this source folder added in here. And so from there, you can just browse to any folder on your computer. And it, let's go ahead and look at what I've got so far here for tonight. I don't have a whole lot of images, but it's enough to get started. And I'll just go ahead and select the first one. You notice down here, it'll say all dot fit files. So once I pick that, you can see it's showing, you know, kind of a play pause kind of deal here. So now I can actually step through one at a time or all of them and see the individual files. Now, this is all unstretched here, so you're just seeing kind of the stars. But so what I would probably do here is let's say, okay, let's live stack these. So I'll go ahead and hit the live stack button. I'm going to clear out my old stack that was in there before. So I'll jump it back to the very first frame. So frame one, we'll go ahead and put it in here. Now you can go ahead and start stretching this if you want for your first frame. Uh, but a lot of times maybe that's uh, something that people are having trouble with. You know, how do I make, get the most out of this histogram? And that'll be kind of our next uh, quick tip here. But so if I want to live stack these, I've got that folder selected. I can just go ahead and hit play and it'll run through all of them here. And it'll just go ahead and stack them up and I can see they're starting to get stacked more and more here. Um, now, the second quick tip is how do you how do you best use this histogram? You know, in, a, in some previous videos, I did a lot of playing around with these sliders here, and certainly you can do that grabbing your white point and dragging things in, and then coming in and grabbing your black point and kind of dragging that in and then grabbing the middle and really, you know, tuning that all in there. And that can be a lot of fun to play around with. But uh, like a lot of things in this hobby, you know, it can, be kind of daunting to get an idea of how it all works uh, until you see it running. And even then, where, where should you be on your image, right? Well, the next kind of quick tip here is about auto stretching. And I think most people that have started using SharpCap are aware that you've got this little lightning bolt auto stretch button on the histogram, uh, which especially when you're live stacking is great. So I can do this and I've got a, a pretty good image here. The this, for a lot of folks, uh, can be a really great starting point. But what I've noticed is depending on my image, sometimes that gets me close, um, but I'd like to dial it in a little more. Well, the, the other neat thing is outside of your um, live stack big histogram here, you also have this display histogram as well over on the right hand side. And so if I unstretch this, you'll notice the display histogram change too. And what this is really meaning is the display, meaning what you're seeing in the main window here. 
So this, the, the big one down below is the histogram for the overall image as it is. But once you've done an initial kind of rough stretch on this, then this one is really showing just what's being shown on the screen here. And where that becomes really neat is when you kind of do a, a kind of two-step dance, which for being from Texas, two-step is rather appropriate. But let's go ahead and say, okay, I'm going to go ahead and do my auto stretch here to get pretty close. And then I'm going to go do the auto stretch on the display. As you can see, it really went even further in on having a separate kind of white mid-tone black point within just what was being shown on the display. Now, this is you know a pretty extreme stretch here, but I think it's pretty easy to tell that we've got, you know, we can see pretty much everything that we're getting here. What, why is that important? What can that do for you? Well, one, I like that it can make uh, just getting a quick idea of what you've got in the image a two button click process, right? But let's say I didn't mess with that other one before. Well, in this case, when I take this all the way back out, you can see I've got a peak that's very, very close to the edge here, right? Um, I was doing this specifically, the images that I'm doing here, I'm trying to get as much kind of dynamic long tail range that I can get for processing later on. But for tonight, I you know while it's stacking, I'd like to just get a good look at in general what I've got. And when I do that first level of auto stretch, well, maybe I don't like that black point. Maybe I want to move it in here. Well, just a single tick in here, going one tick over can make a decent amount of difference, you know? And so it can be really hard. Sometimes even just letting go of the mouse, I may move it a tick more or a tick less than I wanted to. So, once I've got this main stretch in, I can really fine tune it over here where the changes, you know, it definitely has changes that are, that can be dramatic, but they're less of a big change for each little step that's going on. So even after the auto stretch here, I may find, okay, I want to bring my black in a little bit and maybe I want to bring the mid-tones out a little bit, that kind of thing, right? And it's a lot easier to kind of do moves that aren't as drastic with this fine tune after you've done the initial stretch here. You know, so really what I would always say is start with both of these, you know, reset to zero, and then go ahead and auto stretch the big one. And then after that, I really wouldn't touch the big one because really all that the big one is trying to do, I found, is get this hump, which is your sky glow and then the major part of your, your, your actual data of the object that you're looking for into the main part of the display. And then at that point, you can really just come in and do some quick fine tuning to get to the point where you can really see what you're looking at. And then always remember, you can always zoom in if you want to get in and see more. Now, obviously, <laughs> this doesn't look too great at this point, um, and it shouldn't. This is only the hydrogen alpha data on a galaxy. But for getting a quick look at what things are looking like, this is a really neat uh, kind of quick process uh, to go through things. And to kind of show you what this looks like you know, longer term here outside of just having seven or eight images. You know, a few uh, earlier uh, in the month here, did a lot of looking at M101 in Hydrogen Alpha uh, for a project that I'm working on. So I switched the folder over that. I've got 53 images here. Always want to reset my previous stack. And then I'm just going to go ahead, I've got everything reset. I'm going to go ahead and hit, uh, or I'm going to go ahead and step forward a couple of frames here just to once you've got you know two or three stacked it's a good point to get a quick initial stretch on so you can see this is this is what i've got to begin with you know and then once again this is very tightly done in and i so i want to go ahead and move this in maybe a little bit or actually i'm just going to go ahead and do the second auto stretch here 
So without the auto, the, the second auto stretch with it. Okay, can definitely see more of what I've got. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play from this folder. It's gonna go ahead and grab those 53 images and just one by one, it's starting to play through them. And I'm not touching the histogram at all after this point, right? You know, this is really just the data that came in on the images and stacking it up. Um, and so that really allowed me to, you know, kind of get a good image with just kind of click and click. So hopefully for, uh, for those of you that are kind of struggling with, boy, it sure looks like you can do a lot with sharp cap, but I never seem to make the histogram work out right. Hopefully this will help you out. Um, a few things uh, uh, to make sure always, make sure your align frames is turned on. Um, you know, if you're ever dithering between shots or something like that, especially in sequence generator, if you're not aligning the frames, everything's going to kind of streak and blur out on you. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so that's really it for this part of it. And, you know, I hope once again, that that kind of helps people out. There's some additional things that you can always go down the rabbit hole on, on trying to subtract darks and flats. I find that on a given night, um, unless I'm really going for a, a you know, kind of live view session, I don't particularly care about the fact that I'm going to have some extra glow in my, uh, in my frames that, uh, that a dark or a flat could help out a little bit more with. Um, it's really only when I've got kind of severe vignetting that I go there. I find that just kind of doing those live stack options as you've got them normally is enough for me, um, for what I'm working on. Um, but you know the, the ability to kind of have your cake and eat it too uh by capturing uh in one tool that does really well for you know automatic meridian flips and running while i'm sleeping and all that kind of stuff but still being able to live stack uh the view as i want to uh really kind of gives me a, a lot more fun uh even when i'm doing some of those bigger project captures and things like that so that's it uh, for this one. And, uh, you know, I hope uh, that helps out with some folks that maybe are, are trying to learn the curve on some of these programs. Uh, feel free to let me know any uh, other questions you guys might have, and I'll be happy to do a video on that or answer those in the comments. Until then, I wish everybody clear skies. Thanks.